Hey Math Aces and welcome to Mr. Ace Math. In this lesson, we'll go over everything you need to know about how to add mixed numbers. And let's start like we always do with the lesson breakdown. And in case you're new here, you'll find this exact lesson breakdown in the description below with timestamps to each part of the lesson. And you can use those timestamps to get to whichever part of the lesson you need the most. First, we'll go over the three steps that you need to add mixed numbers. After that, we'll go over two examples of how to add mixed numbers step by step. If you want to see a video on how to add mixed numbers using models, I'll make sure I include a link to that video in the description below. After the two examples, we'll go through the pause and practice. This is where you'll get the chance to try questions of your own. After those questions, the answers will be revealed, followed by the reflection, where I briefly review everything from this lesson. But in order to do well in this lesson, you'll need the following three skills. Skill number one, you'll need to know what fractions are. Most importantly, you'll need to know that the top of the fraction is called the numerator and the bottom is called the denominator. Skill number two, you'll have to know how to convert improper fractions to mixed numbers. And skill number three, you're going to have to know how to add unlike fractions. So make sure you know those three skills and let's get started. So let's go over the three steps that you'll need to add mixed numbers. Step number one. You'll need to separate the whole numbers from the fractions. Remember that mixed numbers have two parts. On the left side, there's a big number, that's the whole number, and on the right side, there is a fraction. We need to separate those two things. Number two. We'll have to add the fractions together and carry if needed. What do I mean by carry? Well, I'll make sure I cover that specifically when we get to our examples. And step number three is to add the whole numbers together. So you might want to have this copy down somewhere and let's get to our first example. So here we have three and two fifths plus seven and five eighths. Remember, we'll need the three steps. Step number one is to separate whole numbers and fractions. So I'll draw a line here to do that. Step number two, we're going to add the fractions and carry if needed. So let's add these fractions. Our first fraction is two fifths and our second fraction is five eighths. Because they're unlike fractions or fractions with different denominators, we're going to have to find the LCD. And the LCD stands for least common denominator. And the least common denominator is just the least common multiple for the denominators. In our first fraction, the denominator is five. In our second fraction, the denominator is eight. What is the least common multiple for five and eight. Well, that's 40. Now we have to use this LCD to create equivalent fractions. Let's start with the fraction on top. Five times what equals 40? Well, that's five times eight. And to create equivalent fractions, Whatever we do to the bottom of the fraction, we'll do to the top. So we'll have two times eight. And that gives us 16. Now let's go to the second fraction. Eight times what equals 40? Well, that's eight times five. And to create the equivalent fraction, Whatever we do to the bottom, we have to do to the top. So since I multiplied the bottom of the fraction by five, which means I'll multiply the top five 
by 5 as well. And what's 5 times 5? Well, that's 25. So now that we have fractions with the same denominator, we can add them together. And that means we'll have to add our numerators. So what's 16 plus 25? Well, that's 41. And because our denominator stays the same, our answer is 41 over 40. But we have a small problem. This is an improper fraction, and you should never leave your answer like this. So to fix this, we're going to convert it into a mixed number. 40 can go into 41 one whole time, and the remainder would be 1. So this means this will change from 41 over 40 to 1 and 1 over 40. But now we have a new problem. This side of the dotted line is only for fractions. But now we have a whole number. And this means we'll have to carry. This whole number 1 will get carried from the fraction side over to the whole number side. And now since we have just our fraction here, we can go to step number 3, which is to add the whole numbers. 1 plus 3 equals 4, and 4 plus 7 equals 11. So now that I've added both my fraction side and my whole number side, I'm done, which means the final answer is 11 and 1 over 40. Let's look at our next example. Here, we've got 6 and 7 ninths plus 2 and 1 sixth. Step number 1 is to separate the whole numbers and the fractions. So I'll draw a dotted line to separate them. So we're done with step 1. And now we're off to step two, which is to add our fractions. So we're going to add seven ninths plus one sixth. Because these denominators are different, we're going to have to find the LCD, which is the least common denominator. The denominator in our first fraction is nine. And the denominator in our second fraction is six. So the LCD, or least common denominator, is just the least common multiple for those denominators. So what's the least common multiple for 9 and 6? That's 18. Now that we know the LCD, we're going to have to create equivalent fractions. Let's start with the top fraction. 9 times what equals 18? Well, that's times 2. And whatever we do to the bottom of the fraction, we'll do to the top. So next, we'll do 7 times 2. And that's 14. So our new fraction is 14 over 18. And that's equivalent to 7 over 9. Now let's look at our bottom fraction, 1 over 6. 6 times what equals 18? Well, that's times 3. And whatever we do to the bottom of the fraction, we'll do to the top. So now we've got 1 times 3. And that equals 3. So our fraction 3 over 18 is equivalent to 1 over 6. So now that we have fractions with the same denominator, we can add. And we'll just add the numerators, which means we'll add 14 plus 3. And 14 plus 3 is 17. And because the denominator is going to stay the same, our answer is 17 over 18. Do we have to carry here? No, we don't, because there's no whole number here that needs to get carried. So, we're done with step two. 
And now we can get to step three, which is to add whole numbers. So we've got six plus two, and that equals eight. And just like that, we're done with step three. And that means that our final answer is eight and 17 over 18. So here's your pause and practice. Just pause and practice. Hit the pause button and try these six questions. Once you're done, hit the play button to see if your answers are correct. Ready, set, go. So let's take a look at our answers. Number one is three and seven over 12. Number two is five and seven tenths. Number three is nine and seven over 18. Number four is four and 11 over 24. Number five is seven and four over 35. And number six is eight and five over 12. So how'd you do math aces? If you got every single one right, I want you to put pause and practice pro in the comments. Way to go. And don't forget, to share this lesson with a friend. So what did we learn today? How many steps are there when adding mixed numbers? There are three steps. The three steps are, number one, separate the whole numbers and the fractions. Step number two, Add the fractions and carry if needed. And remember, you're only gonna have to carry if you end up with an improper fraction, because that means you'll convert the improper fraction to a mixed number and carry the whole number. And number three, add the whole numbers. Well, there you go, math aces, everything that you need to know about how to add mixed numbers. I truly hope that this lesson was helpful. If you have any questions at all, leave them in the comment section. I would love to help. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in math class. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Questions, comments, leave them down below. And thanks for using Mr. Ace Math. Don't just pass math, ace it.